should work. How did you high five yourself and almost miss your hand? I wasn't looking at my elbows. Mm. How did you high five yourself? I got a little bit of wind on that gust there. Yeah. I mean, we're outside. It's gonna, yeah, yeah, it's going to be outside. what it's going to be. Clearly, we're, we're legitimately outside. I can give outside. you some de esser if you want. Some what now? The de esser? The noise? Yeah, you want some de esser? I'll give you some de esser. <laughs> de esser me up, dude. Yeah. All right. Love de esser. We're chilling. We're chilling. I think it's good. Yeah. I'm just watching to see if we can pinpoint. I'm outside of your window with my microphones. There we go. That's, a good That's one. rude. Yeah, this is a fa- there we go. Yeah, we got the, we got to have the, the effect effects. volume a little stronger. Yeah, the effects yeah. were a little low last yeah. time. It's okay though. We got to dial that in. Yeah. You know? I'm all about a good effect. <laughs> okay. What? Hmm? What? Yeah. That's right. Whatever Chelsea's done. How's your phone? Uh, it's, right? good, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting texts about podcasts during the podcasts. Hmm. Funny how that happens. Vaughn and I did this video uh, last week explaining why I was like leaving and how it's not about like RTR or FD kicking me out or any of that because it has nothing to do with that at all. <laughs> but everyone online seems to think so. Mm. Yeah, those are my my favorite. They're like he's like I love reading them and they're just put forth with so much confidence. Oh, the conspiracy yeah. theorists! Like, Man, this is awesome. It's they get out there about it. Out there bro i'm like there are more important things to talk about (laughs) for sure yeah like how i'm driving the car next year right yeah everybody knows that that's right you gonna adopt 88 or you bringing your number back i'm gonna reverse dale jr and i'm gonna go to eight he was eight then he went 88 88 backwards is eight 88 is even back is 88 sideways yeah but it's always dale jr was eight i know then he went to 88 so you're 88 i'll go back to eight i'll revert back Okay. Oh, you're yeah. saying you guys are one now. entity. No, one, no, no. One He's being. saying him and Earnhardt are. Yeah, boys. Are boys. Yeah. Tight. So there is a two becoming one with the revert. Because two oh. is better than one. Great. This is going to turn into like all of the emo songs. You guys got to hit the country jammers, dude. I already told you, My Maria, dude. Fire. So there's up. a My Maria uh, emo punk song, too. Dear Maria. Yeah, dear Maria. Dear Maria. Not my Maria. Yeah, I don't get it. Oh twisted. my gosh. My Maria. Dude, yeah. I, oh, whew. you fired I, up. I don't even know what's up. Dude. We can put the Bluetooth on there and put some jams on, dude. No, when I we don't. Get, when we get whacked? Can yeah. we get whackered? I don't think whoa, that's how you. Whoa. You don't think you get whacked. Oh. I think you just don't get any money. Yeah. They demonetize it. They be yeah. whacking the wallet. You get de- <laughs> demon whacked. <laughs> that's funny. I don't know what about this. What about this? You have a cup holder on your chair. I have my water in there for hydration because this podcast is going the distance, bro. Yep. Hey, hey. So you guys want to talk about cars or? We can talk about cars. We can try. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that breeze is nice. That is nice. Not bad. The green. I like the green screen behind me. Yeah. Fantastic. When that fan swings around every once in a while and we get that breeze. Love it, dude. I gotta be. I mean, it's pretty sick to be able to do this and have Type S just power the whole thing. It is impressive. What does that thing say still? 13 and a half hours. It's going to yeah. power this podcast for Crazy. 13 hours. We have the board, two cameras, At and a couple other things hours. plugged in, and it doesn't care. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Not one bit. I'm it's looking at it so right now. so sick. And there's no noise. It's like clean power. I'm pretty stoked on that purchase. I can't wait to see where we bring this podcast with I that little box. I still can't get over, like, it's compact. I thought it was going to be, like, one of those big Bluetooth boomboxy speakers, and it's like, not even the size of a car battery. Well, we know you live in the 90s still, bro. So I don't even have anything to say. His now. laptop is probably powered by a deep cycle it battery be, still. It is old, man. Those hood, those it hood laptops. It's a gateway. <laughs> yeah, uh, some Asus, but it's like five pounds. Asus? Yeah, Asus. Asus? 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 Sure. Asus? I don't know. All I know is when I try to bring it places, it's heavy. And I'm like, this sucks. Yeah. yeah. No, it's one of those things, too. Like, every time you put a laptop in your backpack, you're like, ah. I didn't realize how heavy this was. That's so heavy yeah. when it's on, uh, hanging off your back. I know. Mm-hmm. So cars. We can talk about cars. Yep. We could. I got, Drift I got cars. One. What do you got? What you got? What is something that you guys think, like, most cars should have, but they don't? Most cars? Well, don't no, drift cars. Drift, or, car. Okay. drift car. Like, specific, <clears throat> like, pro am mission up level comp car type deal. It's like mine's like a smoke evac fan. Like I know oh, some right. people do like a hood scoop or not hood scoops. Roof scoop. Some yeah. do, some yeah. of us do do hood scoops as well. Do do. Um, but like yeah, 
some do a roof scoop. I always had that little like fan set up in the back behind the rear firewall with some yep. ducks. I had one of those in the Bergenholtz car, but yeah. that wasn't because of the smoke. It was because it. of the fumes. The fumes. Yeah. yeah. They would yeah. kill you. The two stroke oil in that was like death. Right. But like it worked so great. It would create a little breeze through the cab and it yeah. blow the smoke out. Just and a low like, pressure pull on it. Yeah, it was great. And, mm. you know, you run two tiny little ones, like two eight inchers, not a big amp draw, nothing crazy. Well, that and your battery's normally in the back anyway. Yeah. So you just put a little relay on Short it. Short little, <whistles> yep, little hmm. switch, you know? I don't think I had anything. <laughs> like just... at all. You got nothing where you're like, this was cool that I did, but everyone else doesn't do it. No, I just like would get in my car and be like, it's hot. It's a car. It's a car. Yep. There it is. Paint, okay. I painted it. I think I think a simple one is like the cool shirt thing. Yeah. Cool shirts are the best. Yeah, and I don't mean it from like I think some people are like, oh, that's like professional whatever thing. No, it's no. just like imagine if you just didn't cool. need AC, you didn't yeah. need anything, you just had a cool shirt that when you got in the car, that when you started feeling warm or whatever, yeah. you could just turn it on and use it. I think that's one that's kind of mm-hmm. simple and easy. Also, it's like you could rig it up to work in everything that you yeah. own very yeah. easily. What would you say is like the rough entry cost to like a cool shirt setup? Like 400 bucks. Yeah. yeah, they're starting to get cheap. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. they've, they've been out long enough now, right, where they're advanced to the point of like... You can get like the electric ones. Like yeah. The... Apparently they don't work that good though. Yeah, not great. Because I know like when they first came out, because like the NASCAR dudes, they have to run the electric ones because ice isn't yeah, going to last yeah, four yeah. hours. I mean, it barely lasts a set of tires in a drift car. I mean... Mine seems to last a whole practice session, about two hours. Really? Yeah, the thing is you have to, and this sucks because it's an extra little bit of effort and money, but you have to get a flow controller. Because mm. if you just have oh, it yeah. on full blast the that whole time, sense. it just the hot water just gets circulated, where yeah. if it's slow, it has time to cool again kind of before it goes through. Yeah. yeah. Thermal dynamics. Yeah, like it's like a multi-pass mm. radiator or something. What kind oh. of plane is that? I don't know. A sky plane? They fly so low over this place. You, it's yeah, crazy, dude. You can, keep going. I'm, I'm it's gonna... wild how we were able to shoot in the Jungle Book right now. Yeah. yeah. Wait for what's the... What's That's Baloo Mo- right there flying his plane where, over top. Mowgli? That was the cat. Mowgli. That was the cat, right? Was that, that was the cat? Bobcat or something? He's looking it up to see what kind of plane. Going. The plane he's or the Jungle Book? Oh, he's flying under, dude. Uh, be, in Florida, dude. Might be moving that, that weight. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> There's like little bags flying out. Yeah, we start getting hit in the head. We're like, oh, what is this? Square ain't, no, ain't no pine cone. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think the the cool shirt thing is kind of a neat thing. It's something that like everybody should experience because I feel like it's like uh it really like prolongs the good driving experience. Like when it's really hot out, mm. like and everybody's ripping and driving really, really good, um, you can manage like a lot. Yeah, well, yeah. You're when you're like, competing and driving and waiting and sitting and doing all that, and you're just like baking, yeah, that's when it starts to your be own like, mentality of keeping yeah. you like I'm yeah. comfortable makes a big difference. It makes a big difference. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of elitist thing, but you know, whatever. Well, that's, that's I, I used to I, think that, but that's I, why I asked the price point thing, right? Because if they're coming yeah, down to not, like that, and you look at the grand scheme of your car cost, to like for yeah. you to be comfortable, yeah. and like potentially prevent a wreck, right? Uh, if you want to go that crazy, well. Do you start going? If you need to be cool for your alert at this door. I'm pretty dramatic, so yeah. maybe it would save me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will say. Pat, well, why aren't you driving today? Too hot. Left my cool shirt at yeah, home. Yeah, I can't do too it. Hot. Yeah. I can't. will say one thing. Everybody's like, oh, man, I saw I could buy this whole cool shirt thing, and it's like 500 bucks. Like, whole thing, everything. Like, I can make my own. Ugh. I know so many people that Ugh. have made their own. They never that work. It doesn't work right. Like make you use like a shirt. little just, no you no you buy, buy the shirt, shirt. Yeah. but they'll and make it, they'll take a little igloo cooler yep. or with whatever a, cooler with a, dude, with a fish said, pump like a cool like a fish, fish uh, yeah, yeah. tank yeah tank and like pump. I'm sure it works like yeah. I'm sure they're like oh this is better than being super hot but mm-hmm. like the quality and how cheap cool suit right. cheap is relative yeah but um <laughs> just get the I feel like that that's like the person that doesn't value their time yet. Yeah. Where they're like, yeah. I can save 50 bucks to build this for five hours. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, um, sometimes that makes sense. And some people just enjoy doing that kind of right, stuff. Completely true. Yeah. And some people see something and they're like, oh, I could make it better mm-hmm. and be for less. Like, yeah. I see that. I used to do shit like that too. Now it's like, I can't wait to buy something and just like be ready to buy it again when it fails. 
as long as it actually works. Right. Oh like you my buy gosh. Stuff that's Nothing's like, worse yeah. than spent finally being like, I'm yeah. gonna do it. I'm the buying kits, it. The kits don't yeah. fit. And then you know? it doesn't work. I was gonna say it. And you're like, dude. Kits don't fit. What kits don't fit? Who's it's kits? Kits, man. You just buy everyone buys kits and you're just kits like, for what? Anything. Oh. And like the amount of times where like someone's like, Oh, I bought this thing and like you install it. <laughs> you're busted. No. Nah. Yeah, you're out, dude. Nope. Oh, we turned our you turned You had it out. cranked up, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. All right. Gotta... Like headphone wet users beware. <laughs> 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 gotta have it, dude. Eighty eight five mixtape tape. tape, tape <laughs> no, nah, I mean like generically kits will like come with hardware and it doesn't fit through oh, the hole yeah. because it's like whatever reason. It's a three eighths bolt and an M ten hole and you gotta That's the engineering problem. Like that's like the, oh they, we engineered right. this to work and you're like cool there's nothing that has that thin of sheet metal or flat of sheet metal in a car that you can't mount that to that or yeah. or oh in theory great idea except yeah. now I need to use my own hardware anyway that's what I mean like the yeah okay kids it's like a trade off though you get to use that hardware they gave you for something else and you use the stuff you have to work no, yeah like fill a bucket junk it's too picky and it's like this is cheap garbage and it goes in the trash can all right all right whatever else. What, so Pat doesn't have a thing. No, I, thing. Car, I don't like I said I don't really either because I'm such a minimalist when it comes to building drift cars mm. and stuff. Like I'm so much more focused on like having a bunch of different holes to put my suspension pieces in and like mm -hmm. bringing spare shocks and bringing spare things and like having a spares package rather than having like a boom box in my car. But Which once a car, have, once a car is <laughs> hey, dialed got him. and it's comfy and it's good. I'm like, all right, what's what are some things like that? And like, oh, I have a good one. I in my car, I used to have uh, 12 volt lighting all over the place. Mm -hmm. So when it was time to work on the car at night, yeah, or if I was trying to get belted in, I'd flip this switch, and underneath the car, in the wheel wells, mm -hmm. in the car, in the trans tunnel, That's it was sick. like a working mode mm -hmm. where you could just see everything. You didn't need a headlamp, didn't need anything. Yep. It was amazing for like five minute fixes. And like with Type S stuff, it was like probably. Forty dollars worth of lights, and it was like incredible. Yeah, I think that's become pretty popular too. Like yeah. there were a few people that did it, and they're like, everyone would see it and be like, whoa. I got the yeah. idea from Circle Track team. I saw. Yep. Yeah, they had it in their car. I'm like, duh. Yeah, Circle like, Track guys, man, leading the way. They've been they around for so much longer, thing. and also like they do have an innovative, like way of thinking. Do you think that comes from the rule books being so strict, where like they kind of are forced to think outside the box a little bit? I think it comes from the type of people that race mm. dirt track being problem solvers. Yeah. Yep. Like they almost like dirt track in general, the whole thing is on the premise of solving problems. Yeah. Mm. Similar to drifting, I think too. Like there's a lot of stuff that crosses over to drifting from circle track stuff and dirt track stuff. Like what other types of motorsports could you possibly compare to having counter steer and wheel spin? The only one is dirt track stuff, you know? Yeah. That makes sense. No cool car thing, huh? No, I, yeah. I don't know. Not even a helmet hook? No. 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 Got to have a passenger seat. Yeah, you, yeah, you just toss there, it right? in there. Yeah. Make the person I never got hold the steering it. wheel one. Just put it on the dash. Yeah. So mine is, I use mine for both, realistically. Like, so if I have nobody in the passenger seat, I might hang oh, my God. steering wheel. It's the wheel on the hook, and then, and then the, the helmet thing from the helmet through the wheel. Oh, gosh. Double oh. hang. Whoa. It's too much. Yeah. Nope. But, so much effort. <laughs> I still have power windows in most of my cars. Which is good. It's nice. Yeah. You're like, oh. Heavy feature, but yeah. way worth mm -hmm. it. You know? Mid-run, you put one down, put the other one Ooh, down. I have it. I have something <clears throat> that no one has. Damn, light bulb right here. Ready? Okay. Tanner's going to lose his mind when I say this. <clears throat> Extended long wheel studs. Yeah, thank you. Dude. Yeah, the no amount one. of people... That don't run those is insane. I, I oh, oh my god! I'd rather like cut my feet off and walk on stubs than work on another car with <laughs> short ass fucking good studs. Lord. Yeah, come on, dude. I'm not good at that. You're um, on it. I'm not. Thank he's you. got his stuff planned out. We're just winging it. True. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I can't well, do we're, it. We're bullshitting right now. Yeah. He's like, all right. He's, seven, he's, my he's 17 steps ahead yeah. right now. Yeah. I'm on the next so, episode. I'm going to need three bleeps in the next two and a half minutes. Yeah, I think something that um, so many oh. people miss. Like, so I'm big on having, like, a bunch of different types of wheels. It's cool cheap. to me. Like, so I like having, like, a bunch of different cool stuff, like, wheel-wise. 
none of them are the same offset, mm -hmm. right? So I basically just have spacers that will space them to be the same offset. Now you're probably thinking, oh, that's because he wants the wheel fitment type. But no, I want it to be the same offset because when you change a wheel 15 mil of offset, it changes the dynamic of the car a ton. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, whether you understand it or not, if you go drive a car with a plus 10 offset wheel mm -hmm. and then you put a plus 35 offset wheel, the car is going to feel more hooked up with the plus 35 offset wheel no matter what you do. So I'm always working with people and helping them set up their chassis and do all that. And I end up being like, oh, cool. We could just fix this with a spacer. Right. Oh, you have stock wheel studs yep. that attach to your Wheelwood drag brakes and then attach <laughs> to your 1,500 horsepower drive shaft axles that attach to a quick change. Yep. But you have auto zone yep. yeah. one-inch wheel, wheel things or a, a wheel just, spacer with no studs. explaining my nightmare right now. Oh, God. Hops cars like that. I know. <laughs> oh, my God. I, oh my I know. Because right. we talked about this. I'm like, yep. oh, just tell us, slam a spacer on the back right for the bank. Dude. Nah, can't. And can't. the wheels, like, slammed in the fender. Yep. Like, can't can't do anything right. about it. Oh, bro. The whole setup. But, yeah, that's one thing. I think extended wheel studs. There's, wheel spacers are such a tuning tool in drifting. Five, dude, you can buy a stack of eBay 5 mils for 30 bucks. Yep. Yeah. And so, I mean, not just, only shoop, shoop, extended shoop, shoop, wheel shoop, studs. Shoop, shoop, shoop. When they're like the easy start or whatever. Oh, the bull nose? Oh, yeah. Ooh, that, baby, fire that's me prime up. Time. Shoot. That is up. prime time. The other, so that's another one, right? It's the getting hot and heavy in here, dude. When you have those little ones and you got fancy <laughs> wheels with, with like deep spokes or whatever, oh, and your yeah. dudes, your crew guys are trying oh. to put lug nuts on that are 130 degrees with this much of the studs oh, yeah. sticking oh, yeah. out. No, no. Come on, bro. I'm the guy that's got the, the gun. Yeah, on, and you're like, it's going to go or it's going to go. Mode, <laughs> and I'm full throttle and z yeah. I might miss. With the full nose ones, yeah. you can. Yeah, I mean, you can get pretty spicy with them mm -hmm. for sure. You still yeah. got to have half a brain. Yep. Like, right. you, you got to have it at least kind of close. But yeah, yeah no, the, definitely. The general for sure. angle. Close. But yeah, yeah just like little right. setup things like that, I think people miss. Mm -hmm. Like, um, and they're not like crazy complex oh. to get or to set up. It's like, blow one out. Check the neural diameter. Go on Summit. Oh, my God. Doot, doot, doot. Off you go. Yeah. Or just reorder on Amazon or Summit. You already ordered them. If you have, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying for someone, say, someone new going to do it is what I was just trying to get at. I yeah. feel like another one that I have seen but I have not actually done yet um, is the little pouch. Mm. So die. It's a good move. Like a, Dai like, used to have this little, Dai Oshihara used to have this little pouch. It was like a fanny pack. Yep. Yeah. But it was in on the outside of his door, on the inside of his door yeah, bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he would keep like his phone, mm -hmm. a pen, yeah. and Almost like, like some other little things, a water right? bottle, yeah. and like something else or something in there. I have not done that yet because I just use the bottom of my door, which clearly is a thing because every time I get hit and my door blows out, there's like water, water bottles, bottles come <laughs> up flying everywhere. Um, but I just use that, like my hat, everything goes in there. But the pouch is like such a cool little the thing. The pouch is sick. Dude. And this, and everything that's in it could just live there forever. Mm, like yep. you could have like sunglasses, chapstick, yeah. like all this little stuff that like, I feel, well, I don't know. I'm just saying, you know, or like a little microfiber to sure. clean your yeah. visor yeah. or Blow whatever. Your nose, yeah. perhaps. Blow your nose. Yeah. Maybe there's a, a little uh, like Mucinex in there or uh, what, Claritin. Yeah, because nothing's worse. Hey, uh, crew guy that I pay you to build my, rebuild my car every mm. every lap. Can you go run down and get me a Claritin from the rig in this bag? God, that's like, I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> also, I'm dying, hey, sneezing. Can you bring me my yeah. chapstick? My yeah. lips hurt real bad. I also need a microfiber that I should also have in this bag because my whole entire shield is full of snot from me sneezing. <laughs> with my helmet on, and I can't do anything about it. Yeah, the, yep. the bag is good. Yeah, that's a good one. Good. Yeah, I like yeah that. I've seen that. Uh, Vaughn used to have a visor, so oh, when yeah, you go to a bank track yeah, or something yeah. that had the sun, yep. um, oh, yeah. he could flip the visor down. It was still see-through, mm -hmm. but just very tinted. It was out of a boat, like a boat one. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah, that's yeah. kind of a cool one. Um, I've seen the new Stilo helmet system that has Bluetooth, so you can have jams in your, in your earpiece. What? And it turns the jams off when they radio yeah, they you talk. and start talking yeah, to that's you. That's sick. Like that's the, cool. The sled communicators and stuff do that, like okay. motorcycle guys and all yeah. that. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's some cool stuff. Yep. That's pretty sweet. Another one people miss, which goes along with your fan, mm. is uh, <clears throat> sealing off the inside of their car from the smoke. Yep. I drive so many people's car. I'm like, oh, how do you even yep. drive? They're like, it doesn't get any smoke in here. I'm like, well, clearly you're not flooring it yeah, or something. <laughs> but like... 
I'm like, I can't even see. Also, you're like dying. Yeah. Like, this is not good. What it's about um, fuel level gauge? Oh, Easy. Nah. Nah. You think, you're that's, out. you think that's like overbuilt? New tires. Ah! New oh, tires, God. new fuel. That's yeah. how it works. Let's put gas in your car. Yeah, okay. What do you you're, got you're a talking two like, gallon fuel cell? You're talking full comp level, right? Because there's a lot of like. There's a lot no, of, one here, no. Fuck, no one here competes anymore. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> we all quit. There's a we bunch of quit. dudes that'll put cells in for a car that doesn't need a cell, but then they don't know what their fuel level is because they're it. at like a regular and they fun lose day or something. And they might lose because of it, but or they run no out chance. on track and then they gotta pause the <clears throat> session and go get them. There's no chance that there's a car or a tire or a fuel cell that doesn't last one Correct. pair of tires. But you yeah. have fill to have a brain for that. Cuz no, even you just fill it up every time you put tires yeah, on your car. Eight, you say gallon... these things like it's it's just this gold standard which I get. Tanner's like uh, at 54.7% fuel oh my level God. my no, car yeah. stutters I'm just saying, and loses people fuel don't supply. Think ahead like that. Dude, an 8 gallon fuel cell, if you have a set of tires that can last uh, outlast an 8 gallon fuel right. cell, sign me up. Or the yep. cool down lap is 3 I'm miles. on your guy's yeah. side. I'm just playing devil's <laughs> advocate. Okay. Of like there are people that there are, are. going to be so hyped that there they're are. just going to keep running there until are. they run out on track, and then it's going to stop a session. Whereas, like, yeah. if they had a fuel level gauge, they might be like, oh, I forgot about that. that. I'm getting low. I I'll buy it. I'll buy it. Okay. I'm not. You don't have to buy it. <clears throat> well, I'm let me. Just trying to. We're talking about like some little, some little banner, a little digging here. Talking about the nice little things you can have. Yep. What is something you guys think of as an overbuilt? Thing. Mm. Something you uh, don't need unless you something? are. Something? How about let's just pick any car and point at it. Start, right. Start going. Well, like, what's a thing that you guys see that people don't need it? Like, you don't need it um, until... Every single car that has a single body panel on it that is not aftermarket, that is not painted to match the car. So, what? Can One you, more time? Can you rephrase that? If you that? put a body kit on yeah. your car or over fenders or anything, and yeah. it's not painted to match the car, you wasted the effort, time, and money. Fair. Like, yeah. what are you doing? That money could go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't have the money and time to paint it. Okay, well, then yeah. why'd you buy it? We're talking about ugly cars. I'm saying overbuilt cars. But that's what I'm saying. You don't need that shit. It's overbuilt. Yeah, but you need to paint it. Any turbo V8 that isn't running Formula Drift. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. What a <laughs> fucking waste. <laughs> Wait, that's a bad one? Okay, perfect. Shots fired. I was like... I like. I feel like I had nailed that. No, I was. This was about him. Oh, okay. Well, and then this is about me. Why was that so, about me? <laughs> anyways. Yeah. Anyways. Why was that me? You I had was... a turbo V8. You didn't drive FD in. I did competing though. I was in DMCC. That was your dad's anyway, wasn't it? No. The what? Uh, the, the coupe? The, no, the vert or something. Oh, that was just a street car okay. that you drove for okay. some reason. Yeah, I, it was all the I remember that. That was. <laughs> That it, thing was terrifying. Uh, That's also, we can use that. Hurt drove that. Okay. And that, like, sparked his little V8 turbo addiction. Oh, yeah. He drove Hurt that to Wawa. Big that? Yeah. Hurt has a turbo V8. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's my thing. Is like, that everything would be car. way better if it didn't have the turbo on it. Complications, no. the effort, the money, the for a reliability. Crew, like a, yeah. For a street the, car, it was great. The thing is, like, I get, I, and everyone's going to argue this. This is a personal opinion, but I get the 5.3 turbo thing. Mm -hmm. I understand it. But by the time you were doing that, you could have had you, know, you could have had a decent 6 liter with a cam that was 400 and something horsepower NA and it would have been better in my opinion. You saying mine? No, I'm okay. saying that you oh, I could get a 5.3 for 1200 bucks yeah. and I could do uh <laughs> Well, I think they were like seven hundred for a oh, long dude, time. Oh, dude, yeah, three fifty, okay. yeah, four hundred, so cheap. Peanuts. Yeah, but how much are they now? Fifteen hundred? Yeah, at okay. least. Yeah, it's yeah. like fifteen hundred bucks, and then I'm gonna spend twenty five hundred on a turbo kit, like mm -hmm. at minimum. I know there's probably a cheaper thing, but like yeah. it's gonna be have to be reliable and stuff. Yeah. For twenty five hundred bucks, you could get a decent set, like a cam, uh, probably a set of used heads and an intake manifold, and be like four fifty and change. Mm -hmm. Um. Instead of 550 and turbo and, and heat junk and fuel, and heat. And yeah, it's, heat, it's just like, yeah. and the reliability. Mm -hmm. What I am saying is that I think that if you have more than 650 horsepower and you're not driving FD, that's even silly. <laughs> so like, we're talking about overbuilt. That like, was my where I was going to go. NA, was just like, V8 is the way yeah, if yeah. you're going to go V8. Yeah. 
They're, I was just gonna say the overbuilt is just too much power. Too much power, dude. And then they're like, oh, I need a big tire to go with it. And then you just snowball effect. And then my gearbox yeah. breaks. Yeah. And then my axles breaks. And then I need a quick change. And then yeah. my winters broke. So I need a bulldog. And then my this and that. And like, it's just like, you're just chasing your ass all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, I have built cars knowing that there is a weak link, right? But I pay attention to that and I carry a spare with me. Like my Fox body, the weak link is the gearbox. Now, I'm nowhere really near where it breaks, but mm -hmm. when it breaks, I, I'm not That's surprised. That's another good one. Yeah. Spares. Spares. The dude. lack of spares. We're still on overbuilding, dude. I'm yeah. just, yeah. What else you got? I've rambled on some overbuilt stuff. Cages. Scary. One and a half, oh Scary. nine five, yeah. Yeah. maybe one and five eighths, mm -hmm. oh nine five. You don't need one twenty. Nope. You don't need all of these extra bars extra that bars do nothing. Too much. Yeah. Make it serviceable nightmare. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like stop overbuilding cages. Six point wheel intrusion. Whatever kind of door bar Just you simple. want. Simple. Yep. And a one and a half, oh nine five out. cage for anything we do in drifting That's is going to be were. fine. Yeah. What else? Mm -hmm crash structure stuff oh, way cars. overbuilt to where like you tap someone and your whole frame's bent you're like oh yeah i saw Whoa. you getting after it on Ugh. bash bars on the internet no i just said thank god because somebody posted hey if you have a bash bar that looks like this and it was like a a, a normal hoop but like with two lower down bars and a lower thing and, and then an if X. they triangulate the corners yeah and like and what everyone's like doing? hey you're not allowed to drive our events if you have this that's, i was like that guy's kind of cool thank god i think that was like dude. an australian it's a matt thing. thing or yeah. something yeah. and everyone's like why 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 we'll have because grinders on hand i was like oh. everybody that said why whoa hey pup. Oh, i know hey, we're pup. in the jungle but look at this hi so everyone that said why had their bumper removed to put this bash oh, bar on you know so like oh, the whole <laughs> Pub's getting up in doing? this, dude. Um, cause the you know there was a whole fad for a while of people mm -hmm. that just wanted a bash bar. Yeah, they'd literally take think... their bumper off to bolt on a bash bar because it was cool looking. I was gonna yeah. say, you think some of that was so like when the bumper does explode when they tap a cone that like it looks cool underneath? Cool. I don't think there's anything cool know. about a bash they bar. Look cool. The factory bumper bar on almost every car <laughs> is yep. still fine yeah now i understand like especially with some cars like you lop the front frame rails off for intercooler stuff and you start going down that route but you just need a hoop you just need a single hoop it's just, yeah, it's just like protect it it's a bumper holder yeah yeah Co bumper cover holder yeah, yeah. and like <sighs> yeah crazy bash bars ridiculous drives me nuts yeah i don't Ooh. like when you can see bash bars if, yeah. No. If you're doing any level of competing and you don't have a jack point in the back of your car, mm. oh, crazy time! I'm out. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's like jack. I don't own a single car. Really? That. Well, has yeah, a but jack point. Yours are probably built to where like the diff is easy to get. Oh to. Yeah, 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 super easy. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I'm saying. When like you got to go way under. To and, be like, fair mess though. Around, or like pull this up and then put the thing and like crawl under it. Yeah. No. When I redo the back of my car for the quick change, the Fox body, mm -hmm. I will do that because solid axle. If you yep. jack it up oh, by the diff, there's no droop, and you yeah, can't, can't get the get, wheel off. Yep. Man. I stared at your car at OSW one day for like 10 minutes. I go, I don't understand how any of this is working. <laughs> Why does he not have any droop? Like, how, what kind of new stuff is he doing right now? And Little like, does he know that car has like six inches of droop because it doesn't need any up travel. <laughs> it only needs down. Car bunny hops off the, does an endo on the gas. But, yeah, that, okay. Uh, fuel cell stuff, like you mentioned earlier, like if your if your car has a good factory fuel tank, mm. especially like E thirty six, forty six, the fuel tank yeah. position is so good. Is it is S fourteen decent too? Yeah, yeah. S fourteen is decent. It's like middle, yeah. on top of the subframe. Yeah. yeah, it's actually yeah. like a, it's really ideal. S fourteen. Yeah. Thirteen is sketchy. Yeah, thirteen is sketchy. Like the baffles always the break. Back. What was that car? That always, uh, when you rear-ended it, it blew up. Uh, Pinto. Pinto, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, the gas roll. tank was, like, right in the back. Yep. That's always I think about S chassis. I'm like, oof. Yeah. And that piece that, like, covers the back where the license plate is and comes down and keeps the, like, uh, fuel tank safe, it just rots out anyway. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So when you do rear-end it, all the rot just pokes holes in the gas <laughs> tank. <laughs> it's, like, so bad. Uh. All right, what else you got? I'm trying to think Dude, of something you overbuilt on your cars. 
right now. The radios are probably way too Yeah, you put lots of radio. He's got the yeah. wakeboard tower. Oh, you're the no, stunt that, wall yeah, guy. Yeah, stunt I'm wall. Really, I told you I'm into oh that. Oh, my dude. goodness. You but that are. was like, I threw that to Max as like, yo, this would be kind of funny. And he's like, yeah. yup, do it. And I'm like, all right. That E36 I had at E-Town, the blue one, that also had the wakeboard tower speakers. I don't remember that one. The, yeah, Turbo M52 one. That I had the last two years before I moved back to Florida. throwing letters at me. Like it's I know here. It's the are. blue car on the side of the house right there that you saw. We're in the jungle. Huh? We're in the what jungle. Yeah. About? My house is over there. Way the over there. Yeah. Um, yeah, radios, dude. The yeah. Chris Myers car yep. has the 6x9s mm. and the 4-inch ones. 6x9s got to be the worst speaker design ever, though. Probably, but they fit worst really sounding. good in those back little panels. They do, yeah. I was like, cool. this is perfect. It's fine for a drift car. You're not going yeah. for quality. No. No. Just loud. Remember yeah. Lee Alexander? Mm. The sub? Sub. Yeah. I had a in sub in FD yep. my first year. That's Dude, the move. I had a Serum Vega 12 in the back mounted down, like, away from the quarter panel. The radio is a good move, So you I could think. still smash it. And the on the sub, I got a decal that said ballast because you could only have 50 pounds of ballast. Mm. Pulling up to – I can't remember why I would have been on track with Vaughn in 2012 oh, in Long yeah. Beach. But I pulled down <laughs> – Oh, my car broke, so I was stuck down there. Oh. And, like, practice switched over, and Vaughn pulls out, and he like, he's like, you good? And I'm like, yeah, they got to tell me off. He goes, all right. Kid oh, Rock. Only God knows why. Turned his radio up, was listening to Kid only Rock on Grid. Like, this is God knows why. This dude's or, doing it right now. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Kid Rock, uh, dude. My name is Kid. Killing it. Dude, he won that year. What, what, could no. I, what else did I do? 12? No, not 12. 10. No. 10. 10 and 20. Yeah. Two champs. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, Kid Rock. I tried to get him to sing Kid Rock at uh, karaoke the other day after the banquet. I put on uh, Cowboy. Mm-hmm. That's a good one, dude. That is a good one. Yeah, because there's like some rap, some singing, yeah. and like you'd be surprised how many lyrics you know in that song. It's embarrassing. Isn't to that me. wild? The ones that have been played on the radio a ton. Yeah. Like, you don't really recognize how much you know it until like you hear it. Subconsciously. Yeah. Yeah. Wild. Ooh, so spooky. <laughs> no, come on. You guys are just haters. Oh, double whammed, dude. It's all right. Yeah. It's okay. Double stinko, dude. I'll take it. Yep. Yeah, so some things underbuilding too. Some people yeah. underbuild their car with stuff. Yeah, the the lack of wheel stud would be an underbuild. That'd be underbuild. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I think too. Oh, an overbuild one. Do not and please stop putting twin disc clutches in your 300 horsepower car. Don't understand that. Yeah. Without having some sort of like flow controller for the pedal. Yep. Yeah. Like I can see like if you're planning long term and you're like, hey. I'm going to make 700. I'm putting this Jay-Z or LS or something in my car. I also, or I plan on revving it to like 8,000 or 9,000. So you want to shift it like K series, whatever. There's some exceptions to the rule, but like, dude, you could put a twin disc in a stock KA car and break the input shaft or break the gearbox or break an axle. Like, why are you doing that? Mm. Like, stop. If your clutch can't be driven on the street without looking like an idiot, then the clutch is wrong. It's like, you need some Agreed. sort of delay. That's an easy overbuilding one for sure. Even you can... Is that, go ahead. Well, is that overbuilding or underbuilding? Because you're not both, adding... I guess. Yeah. Right. It could be both. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like you can go a long way too if you're smart with your foot. Yeah. But if yeah. you're you not... But, but. but yeah, but like, who wants to be worried about that right. when they're having exactly. the best tandem run of their life and the guy stalls a little and you're going to clutch dump from the moon? Yep. Yeah. Like, dude... Rubber. Yeah, done. <laughs> Weekend's over. Pack it up. Yep, or yeah. hey, uh, guys, uh, I'm gonna do a gearbox. You guys want to help me? Like, it sucks, dude. Mm-hmm. It sucks. Yeah, those are no fun. I think smart building of cars too. Like when you're doing exhaust and you're doing uh, things underneath the car for the transmission or the turbo or whatever the case is. Like you want to plan it out for like things that could go wrong and fail. Mm-hmm. You know, I see a lot of guys even like as simple as. They have those vibrant or like uh, Zeus style, whatever the clamps are on the intercooler piping everywhere. Oh, like the fan gen? Yeah, instead yeah. of having like a coupler. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think like at minimum you need two couplers, like one on the turbo or or, mm-hmm. or one on the intercooler. That way you get a hit, you get a bump, yeah. and it doesn't just shift everything and you're done for the weekend because yeah. you need a TIG and some piping to rebuild. 
Yeah, that forethought goes a mm. really long way. Of yeah, I think like, that kind of only comes with experience, though. Maybe, to an ex- but to some an people really. We're talking about overbuilding. Some people really, really care about what the stuff looks like on the mm-hmm. car so much that it ends up being really heavy, clunky, and yeah. hard to work around. Yeah. Like building these like aluminum brackets for every little thing yeah. and like connectors and brake lines and all this stuff like being bulkheaded through this piece. And then when one thing goes wrong, mm-hmm. it's a mess and yeah, a disaster. Right. Or it's like six pieces to pull apart to get to the one Correct. thing that you actually need to. I've, I've definitely seen a lot of that where like I'll look at someone's car and I'm like, damn, if that breaks, you're done. But mm-hmm. also at the same time, damn, that's sick. Like right. that's yeah. a really good job. But like that doesn't belong on a motorsports vehicle. Yeah, it's like a balance, if you just have right? a show car or maybe you're building a car that's dope and you drift it every once in a while. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yep. But once you start competing and doing stuff and you lose because you built this aluminum bracket that, like, did something and you couldn't change something in time. Yeah. And then also people are like, how do I get my car lighter? Like, my car, my E36 weighs 3,250 pounds. <laughs> and you're just like, that's like 600 pounds more than mine weighed. Mm-hmm. Like, how? 600 pounds? How do you even do that? And I start looking at the car. I'm like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Pound here. Steel brackets there, everywhere. Yeah. No holes in anything. Yep covering up holes in the firewall with like 10 gauge like you know what i mean just like huge stuff Mm -hmm. yeah and i'm like no you could have just done that with a piece of carbon fiber and aluminum rivet you guys feel it's harder to get into building a car now than it was before due to like information sources because you would kind of think right that it's easier now with all the youtube content and like the facebook well to what level any of them are like you talking about like fabricating and building like a pro car or like just building a... I think kind of both. Where I'm going with it is I think there's a lot of more... There's more information that isn't necessarily accurate or best for people. And it's harder now for people to decipher what is good information and what isn't. So that... Is yeah. kind of the way I was trying to I see go that. with that. That's exactly how I feel. Because yeah. like I think it should be easier than ever to build a drift Correct. car right now. Yeah. Because you can buy anything for damn near any car Mm -hmm. like an s chassis like they sell like like yeah okay you might have to take it somewhere to get welded but like Mm -hmm. cage kits yeah like like that's a game cage cage tube front and it's like those actually like they fit good oh my god yeah Yeah. and they're like save somebody 30 hours building a cage like sure they have a value to them but it's still cheaper than paying someone to do a real cage in your Mm -hmm. car not that that's not a real cage i'm saying like a a custom bent one-off thing Like, you get a pallet, and you install a cage in a day. But, like, I think there's so much, and that's not bolt-on. That was a bad example. But so much bolt-on stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And even, like, the fuel cell stuff now. Yeah. Like, Radium and Fuel Lab. Like, they sell these parts that are just like, hey, just buy this. And then, like, if you YouTube how to make Mm -hmm. AN lines, you can make your whole fuel system work. You don't have to, like, build hangers. And or like have someone fab up your incel stuff. It's just you buy it and you hook it up. Yeah, I think some of that you got to be careful too, though. I see it a lot building stuff. Of it doesn't always all work together. Well, you know, that's like, what I was gonna say. So yeah, like you so, can buy all whatever you want. There's a beauty of it, but the compatibility of everything aftermarket yes. working together right. is generally slim to none. Yeah. So like, like one I was... person's kit doesn't take into account where someone else built an arm in a different fashion or something. Right. Yeah. So I, like he said the radium thing, and I was like, yeah. That's great because you know what? It really does conclude the entire fueling package. Like you can have it and order from them so your regulator is on the return right there on the fuel cell or inside the unit and all that. And you're just running one line deadheaded up, right? So like that's something that's easy. But on the other end with everybody is like, oh, I have these rear knuckles and then I use these arms and this thing. And I look at it, I'm like, oh, that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Like, because of these, this, 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 and this. And then they're like, what do you mean? It all bolted together. And you're like, nah, but, like, that heim's going to bind there and break. Your upper control arm's going to hit here. Mm -hmm. Like, that was meant to work with this and this only. But, like, because you look, oh, what was the best tension arm? What's the best lower control arm? What's the best? And they kind of piece it together because they're getting good advice. But the package of it doesn't really work. I deal with that a ton. Like, oh, why doesn't this fit? Well, that's because you're using this, this, and this. Right. And they're all different brands or whatever. Like, when you go off the deep end with trying to do something like that, know that there's probably some fabrication involved and and a little bit of mindset of understanding what's going on with it. Yeah. I think there's a lot of two guys, not necessarily brand new, 
but wanting to like take their car to the next step buying stuff that is like competition oriented that has service life or service intervals that they don't necessarily realize and then they go into it of like oh this really expensive cool thing broke dog box yeah Right. I love it. I think dog box yep. is one of the most important things. It's the best part I've ever bought for my car. But it's a yearly service item at right. minimum. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's every three or four events. Yep. Well, and like with this speaking to how easy it is to get shit now. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when I got my dog box in 2013. Like we make the effort, but it's always. It's too always late. That's what I makes tried. it funny. Whatever. <laughs> like in 2013, got dog box. 20 into 2012, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like. RTS didn't exist. I yeah. like yeah. called around to people. I go, hey, I want to buy a dog. They go, oh, call this guy in North Carolina. It's called Competition Transmission. Call this guy, some old dude, had a bunch of old NASCAR takeoff stuff. Yep. He goes, okay. He's like, S- he did the same service as RTS essentially. Mm-hmm. And back then it was a lot cheaper. Oh, and yeah. I think that dude was getting silly deals from shops. I so feel like buying... we were buying them for four, 3500 to four grand all day fresh then. Not GSRs. Oh, no. I was buying, like, Mid-Valleys yeah. and some of the other boxes like Because I, I bought a GSR shipped with a bell housing, not an SFI bell housing. Yeah. It was, like, 5500 bucks. Oh, shipped. yeah, it's cheap. Like, and the dude rebuilt it. Like, used case, but, like, yeah. new gears, new bearings, new input yeah. All of us are getting like, used that. cases unless you're buying a brand new one from GeForce yeah. for twelve grand or whatever they are. But you had to put so much effort into getting a dog box back then not, you had to call somebody right, right? Yeah, yeah but now with rick you just call rts and be like yeah you know you can order it yeah. on his website a lot of people don't understand how to operate a dog box which is a silly thing what do you put it in gear and go dude i see so Are many you, people no one knows how to operate a dog box i literally just left fd Irwindale and watched everybody rev their car as they're jamming it in gear and stuff that i've watched vaughn break probably well not break but just damage reverse gears like over and over again because he just tries to jam it in reverse instead of going into first first. right they don't do first reverse they don't they'll rev it up and they don't hold the clutch in for five seconds to put it in gear yeah like mechanical empathy dude they shift it soft like the worst Mm -hmm. nine times out of ten a dog box breaks due to improper use Mm yeah because they're like they go to shift like oh i gotta be easy right like you'll hear people put it in gear I don't know how they do it, but they're used go, to them. Sink, not lying. Oh, the worst. <laughs> it's get, like they're putting strength into it, but no speed. Mm, that, so they just like. They're firm and ready, but, but they're slow. not like. Yeah. yeah. Instead of just bang, you being easy and just yep. pop, pop it in the gear. It's like they didn't learn on an old T5. That's right. You know? But no, back. You stick in a bucket. Back of rocks, then when I got mine, I there. had to ask a bunch of people. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, what do I do? I'm like, this is an investment. And the best piece of advice I ever got about a dog box was from Tony Angelo. Mm. He goes, shift that mother like you mean it. Yep. I go, what? And he goes, try to break the shifter. Yep. I go, what? He goes, as hard as you can. He goes, do you got money for another one? I go, uh uh. He goes, shift it as hard as you can. Yeah. I mean, I've broken multiple shifters in my car. Yeah. Burned into my brain. Just gone, gone. Like, yeah. And the same thing, like, if you know you're going to start your car and move right away, yeah. Put it in gear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Start the car. Then you don't have to worry about your first gear dog ring getting smashed. Like, I'm big on doing some sort of preload in the shifter. So, like, when I shift one to two, two to three, I'll be, like, my finger is on it, pulling back a little bit while I'm on throttle. So that way when I release and clutch, it just goes immediately. Yep. It doesn't even – it just meshes the next dog, like, like, immediately. Yeah. yeah, just a little, not a lot. Mm-hmm. A little bit, like, I feel like it goes a long way. But my thing with the dog box thing is, sure, six grand, seven grand, that's what they cost now. You maybe can find a cheap T101A or something for like 3500 to four grand, but mm-hmm. you're going to have fucking problems with it. Yeah. And uh, basically, when it you're going to need to have spare dogs, probably a spare third gear, and some other little bur- like um, seals and other yeah, little, little stuff. Bits and bobs, if you will. Because they do wear, and they do not last as long as a regular transmission that has regular synchros and all that. Yeah. Like... The strength and robustness is great, but they are a crash box. Like, yeah. they smash into each other to make gears. So if you're not doing it right or you're doing whatever, every time you handbrake, every time you clutch, every time you do anything that disables a drivetrain, those dogs smash into each other. So, like, it's going to, in drifting, they just wear. And yeah. dogs be barking. And dogs be barking. Dogs do be barking, dude. Yep. good. I'll give it. Thank you. That's a good one. <clears throat> the dogs be barking. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so like I know with us, like I'm rough on third gear dog rings because of the downshifts because I on power downshift all the time. Mm-hmm. 
so that it could be done seamlessly. And I use it to kind of control the wheel speed through some parts of the track. So like for me, I know every Saturday or that morning or whenever the gearbox goes in, it probably has a new dog in it, except for like, let's say Irwindale or one of these other places where I don't really downshift, you know? So that sucks. That's a wearable item. The, a pair of dogs and a gear is more than a ZF costs now. I mean, that's an expensive pair of dogs. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, like, what right. dogs new or what, like 150 to 200 bucks each? Yeah. And then a gear is like 400, right? I don't know. Yeah. So it's like 800 bucks in, in the spares. And, the, yeah. and I would think maybe not the gear, but the dogs, you're definitely going through a, a couple dogs a year. And it might make it and it might be fine, but then one day it's going to pop out of gear and you're going to be screwed. Yeah. Then your dogs will really be barking. Then you're, you're, well, you'll be do- barking at your dogs. <laughs> be howling, dude. Yep. Yeah, I think you see that with a lot of different components when guys make that step. You know, they go away from that like OEM stuff that's been designed to take abuse of any caliber for such a long time. Yeah. To like a precision race component that needs yeah. to be maintained. Yeah. The other, another crazy thing, which is so simple to do. Nut and bolt checking your car. Oh, yep. my gosh. Paint, paint mark. Dude. Dude. Give, give me a paint mark. I've seen so many cars Ooh. break at the track, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, what happened? And it's just like a sheer bolt. Yep. It's or, like, oh, oh my, my, I keep bending these parts. Like, why do they keep bending? That's yeah. really shitty. And you're like, well, I mean, how often are you making sure they're tight? Because mm-hmm. they won't bend if they're tight. Like, yep. I mean, like, you like the marker thing. Yeah. I dislike the marker thing because I have other people work on my car all the time. Right. Yeah, fair. And if they don't know the visual yep. understanding and check, mm-hmm. they just see all the lines you line up, and that's yeah. it. Yeah. And they don't see a bent arm or a this or that. Like, yep. So I'm always like, hmm, things that are a pain in the butt to get to, mm-hmm. I have marked. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, the things that you shouldn't have to check mm-hmm. or, like, shouldn't normally come loose, right, yeah. that are deep in there or whatever, paint mark those. Yeah. But I totally get that, like, Tie rod nuts. Yeah. Leave those undone. Yeah. Like, don't, you don't need to. Leave them undone. Yeah. Don't tighten them. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I'll I get agree. myself on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. It's not yep. the same when you. The, it's not the same. Yeah. There's got to be like someone hating on you for it. They tried. <laughs> Shots fired. All right. <laughs> All right. So, yep. yeah, drifting. Yep. Yeah. How many tires do you think you've gone through in your life? Oof. Jesus. Going deep here. We're Five, have to do. four, three, two, one. I'm definitely probably the lowest in the group here. Okay. It's got to be like 2,000, 3,000. 2,000. That's a big step. I know, but I'm just trying to ballpark this. Okay. What do you think, Pat? Dude, you know I'm not good with numbers. You probably know it to the tire. I don't know it to the tire because like, but I know like on my spreadsheet here. I used to know it to the tire because I ordered See? all my tires. Yeah. And it was yeah. very easy to do. But now with like RTR and some other things, like we order them in groups for multiple people and all that. But mm-hmm. I've worked it out to be probably about four hundred and thirty to four hundred and sixty tires a year for like the past probably twelve years, ten years. Yeah. So I figure I'm probably like six or seven thousand tires by now. Yeah. So my my the reason I brought this conversation up was like tires are the biggest pain in the ass with drifting ever. Yeah. You want to talk about something that's over mean, or underbuilt? How about something that's under like understood? Yeah. <laughs> like so like you buy a tire, you go online, you research it, right? And you buy however many you need, then they get shipped to your house. Then you got to go to the machine or wherever you go. You got to mount them. Yep. You got to go to the track. You got to put them on your car. Some pay for that you burn, every time. Yeah, you burn them down to nothing, right? Yeah. You take them off of your car. You bring them home or to your buddy's shop or whatever. You dismount the tire, and then you got to pay to get rid of the tire yep. after all that. And you're just thinking, like, that consumable is like, oh, I just need some tires. Like, oh, it's no big deal. Like, that each pair of tires, no matter how you look at it, is 45 minutes of your life. Mm-hmm. Easy pair of tires wow easy yeah now in fd obviously like we have a crew that helps us and does things for that but like dude i like i literally live breathe and cry about tires yeah i think it's four or five minutes easy because a lot of like now right they're shipped in yeah i used to have to go get them at the freight place 
Yeah, but you're getting like so then you have, a bunch of them. Right, but still, it's more time. Yeah, it's yeah, more yeah. like transit to get there, to unload them from the freight, to put them in the truck, to go home, to unload them, to mount them, to store them. It's it a perspective that I think a lot of people miss, mm-hmm. you know, and that that this is why, like, I think of these things and then I'm like, don't overbuild your car. Right. Like, if your car isn't a competition car and it doesn't get 20 laps on a pair of tires, that would be 10 laps per tire, you know, think about how much time and effort you're putting into something to have it go up and smoke, you know, like, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, I know everyone's like, oh, smoke, angle, blah, blah, like, yeah, for sure. But, like, you should build a car that you can drive like that and it makes tires last. Damn, that's depressing. Right? I try not to <laughs> think about that. <laughs> Damn. Is that that's a good reason to not overbuild a car? Right. Yeah. Or hook your car up a little more or, you know, really think about the yeah, process so of finding a tire that works really good for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? It's a balance. It like is a balance, for right. sure. That's why I just build really lightweight cars, and I can put a tire on it that lasts forever that mm-hmm. maybe doesn't have as much grip. Yeah. But in the long run, like, I'm doing 20, 25 laps on a pair of tires when, when I'm tandeming with people and dooring them, and they're getting four. Yeah. Or less, maybe. I think it's the weight, too. Like, big part of it. Weight. Oh, it's people, definitely the know. weight. Yeah. Yeah. I don't ever. I think, I, I think everyone knows. That weight is crucial. No, people no. don't know that. Really? Yeah. Because everyone's Bro. always like, oh, what's that weigh? Or how much yeah, does that thing weigh? They just, it's like an easy question to ask right. that everybody understands, I think. But I don't the, think there's a lot of thought process, process it. behind yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Well, in their it mind, is. it's just go, oh, fast. Right. Yeah, right. There's no that's logic I mean. to the, that's it's just I mean. like, yeah, oh, yeah. fast. Yep. Yeah. It's not yep. like, oh, these are on parts, these are on tires, these are on. Oh, light go good. Yeah. I can't even. fast. Yeah. Like, the reason I built that Fox body. fast was because I drove a couple of like really light cars and I've driven a couple really heavy cars, Can right? Can you say what the really light ones were that were like, oh damn. I drove a JZX in Japan that was a thousand kilos with a driver. So you convert that to something. Yeah, twenty two hundred pounds yeah. with driver. Light. Okay. Nine nine light or something. Do good. Yeah. Yep. Um it had S R in it and a JZX. Ooh, perfect. Yeah. yeah. So I drove that car and I was like, dude, how fast it stops how quickly it accelerates, how fast you can change direction, and how you need to make it do everything. Hmm. So, like, a lot of car, and, that, like, that takes a little bit of different driving adaption and whatnot, and I found that out with the Fox body because I set it up, like, crazy out the hole, like, first time driving it, and I couldn't even drift it because it was super light, and it was moving the weight where it needed to be to maximize everything. Yeah. So, like... I went to park, and I've been driving my 2,800-pound E36s there, my TI. I've even driven, like, some gnarly cars there, but nothing less than, like, 2,800 pounds. And I pulled out on track, and that was, like, 2,450 with me in it. Jeez. Right? So it was about 400 pounds lighter, 500 pounds lighter than anything I had driven on that track. That wasn't, like, a Miata or MR2 yeah. or something small that has its own complex things. Mm-hmm. And I, like, couldn't fill any zones just drive out I of them. I couldn't get no I couldn't get to them because I'd oh. flick or clutch kick and send the car in but then just come up short cuz everything would just hold it down. Yeah. And I'm like, "Whoa. I can drive this thing so hard and wait till the last second for everything." That's and like cool. sick. Yeah, and then I'm like the car started its life at like 330 wheel horsepower and almost like probably 370 torque and like the tires lasted Five times the amount of laps as my 200 horsepower E36s. Wow. And you're like, how? How does it do that? Like, A, I was able to run a little bit bigger of a tire because I had a little more power, but then also because it's so light. Yeah. And in a tandem, dude, dude in front of you locks up the brakes, slows down. You can still stay in it a little bit longer before you brake. Wait, yeah. It was a lot to get used to. I bet. But I think it gave me a big advantage because I knew I could dive as hard as I wanted, and I'd always be able to stop that mass from going into the person. Did you find it was hard to go back the other way, back to the heavier car? Oh, my God. I went to my FD car, and I was like, dude, (laughs) it was like pulling the sails out, dude. (laughs) Dude, my FD car weighs 800 pounds more than my Fox body. Jeez. Eight hundred pounds. Yes. That's an iron block LS with a blower and a gearbox. Lighter. At, yeah, at least. I feel like you could add a little more in there. Wow. With a gearbox, I'm saying. Yeah, depending on the gearbox. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. Lighter. Yeah. Like what? That's insane. Yeah. Perspective, dude. It's crazy. That's like how much a baby elephant was. 
you know. Oh, we, man. Are we onto this American measuring things? Yeah. How many hot dogs are in? <laughs> <laughs> how many hot dogs are in that wheelbase right there? Oh, about yeah. uh, 17 hot dogs in that yeah, wheelbase. About however many of those. Yeah, that's there. right. Many hot dogs, dude. Easy. So I can't drive Camaros and FD. The wheelbase is like 24 hot dogs. That's right. It's insane. That's right. Oh, no, wheelbase thing. We could talk about that. Mm. That seems to be a hot topic lately. Do you know that every car I've driven in FD and for fun that I have built has the same wheelbase? The magic number. Excuse me? My E36. The magic number. My TI. Mm -hmm. My Fox body. My S550 Mustang. My literally everything. Name a car that I drive it that, that I drift that isn't like a fun little like a Miata or whatever. They're all 107 inch wheelbase. You laugh because my Fox body, the stock wheelbase, is one a hundred and a half. Well, I've seen the fenders on. <laughs> and that I've thing. just made it one hundred and six point eight. E thirty six are that big? Yeah, my Ti has the same wheelbase as my S five fifty FD car. Which is like the brain. It's hard for the brain to be like, "Yup, you see my, that or you think it." And I'm like, yeah. "Nah." Yeah. It's just the overhangs. Yeah, well, they, and they, like the E thirty six looks like a Matchbox car next mm -hmm. to an S five fifty. Oh yeah. Yep. That's, that's a funny <clears throat> kind of perspective, too. Like, all those cars, bigger wheelbase than an SC300. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. SC300 is what? Yeah, and you look at that. 104, right? One of, like, almost 106. You okay. look at one of those, and you're like, that thing long. It's long. Yeah, that thing long. Their wheelbase track width, mm -hmm. it's a C6. Mm. It's, it's within, like, a quarter of an inch. Big C6 Crazy. guy over here, dude. Yeah. Used to be. What's it like to wear a shirt TV with your TV. own face on it? Uh, it's kind of funny. There it is. Yeah. Did you not notice it till now? No, I've seen it. Oh, okay. I was just being polite. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Old Munson burner over yeah. here. Mm -hmm. These were great. They still, <laughs> they still are great. He's talking about how great yeah. his shirt is. It has a picture of his face <laughs> on it. I'm wearing my shirt. My shirt has my name on it. But it's yeah. a jersey. Mine does too. Yeah, it does. That's what I said. I'm halfway yeah. there. Yellow is my color too, apparently. It just has become my color over the years. Yeah. I have fans that have been like, dude, I love that you love yellow. You're like, I do? I was like, I, I actually feel like my car looks sick. The FD car. Mm -hmm. I, yep. I actually don't hate yellow, yep. but it never would have been my first choice with anything. No. But then, like, Pennzoil comes along, well, and we get this livery done, and I'm like, yeah. oh, I kind of like, in a race car setting, I yeah. kind of like yeah. yellow. I mean, like, 2013, we were talking about yellow Hummers, H1s. Yeah, but that's different. Is it? That's a Hummer. That's yeah. why I got a yellow Corvette. A Hummer's we already, like, like the yellow with the, when them play Chiquita, and the windows just crack just enough for everyone else outside to hear it. Dude. And then I did, I did it. I lived the dream. We I need to the get vet. the Hummers, dude. Yeah. yeah we, the Hummers, like, it's hard like you got Paris Hilton in the back of your car anyway. Everyone's looking at it. Right. Nonstop. Like, I still think, dude, the H1, two car open, and just two IROX with two J's. Oh, dude, what, not Ugh. two car open Do you hear on this? the little, the gooseneck trailer that has the little hoop one. So you can have a really tiny bed and yeah. put it in the bed of the Hummer. Oh, you're talking about the yeah, 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 H1 truck deal? Yeah, the H1 yeah, truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you this trying to put folder isn't... two J's and stuff? I so it's more that of was a his flex part of it. Thing. I was the IROC. I picked the IROC, and then he's like, yeah, with two J's. I was like, I just I don't. don't. I, and again, preference. I don't really like driving LS cars. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> You want to know like my reason why, or you're like, no, there's no reason why this would work ever. <laughs> I just don't care for LSs and how they drive. I like to have. I does not get it. A little bit more. Imagine not when you floor it. it and you're on throttle. I like there to be like more after that, and I feel like I've never driven an LS that had more like after that. Yeah, he's flat shifting. Getting it. Getting it. Yeah, I don't know. I just maybe I haven't driven the right LS then. Could be. Could be. Could be. Anyways, I mean, it, yep. we were talking about weight and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. The aluminum LS is definitely the route to go for that. Yep. There's yep. no arguing that. There's not really. I mean, other than maybe my EcoBoost, but it has very low limitations. Like yeah, compared to LS, you know. Yeah. There's not a lighter engine, I don't think, without going motorsport grade of some sort. Mm. 
I just can't. It's so hard for me to get away from just like a decent power NA V8. Yeah. Just the overall simplicity of all of it. Yep. Is like long term for a competition use or something aggressive use. It's just reliable. Yeah. It's like, why do you want to yeah. be chasing all this other stuff with heat and oils? Oh, and yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Nah. Yeah, I don't get it. And like, it's like the wheels that don't fit on people's cars. I go, Sorry, I don't, I don't get it. And they're wheel? like, yeah, we know. Yeah, it's like, yeah, dude, I'm cool. It's like, <laughs> that's fine. Like, like I'm also get... not like hating. It's, oh, I am. I just I don't am. get it. I t- tilties, mm. hating. Mm-hmm. All hating. the tilties, whether it's your truck tilty, or your mm, wheels tilty, yeah. nope. or out any of that. Yep. Like you can have <clears throat> some front tilties, but yeah. Back tilties? Oh. So my thing is, like, you can have front and rear camber. I really don't care as long as you don't have more rear camber than front camber. Nope. We're getting off topic here. Yeah. That was not drifting. Right. I'm just talking about in general. Mm-hmm. Can't have any camber drifting in the back. Yeah, you better not. Not unless you're Osbo in 2016, 17. Huh? Yeah, dude. I think they were, like, trying to get more side bite in the car. Mm. And they used to run camp, like, a degree and a half or two degrees of rear That's camber. True. Really? Yeah, because, like, leaning the car over and doing stuff, I was always like, what is going on? But, like, I, that is a trailing arm car that has a lot of forward bite, and it doesn't have a lot of side bite. So, like, I was always like, oh, that's, what that's why they're doing it. But I'm just like, there's other ways to do that. Oh, well. There's other ways to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. What were we talking about that I got so upset about Tilty Wheels? LS. LS. He said he didn't like LS. Oh, I oh, yeah. totally blew it for you. Sorry. Yep. So you're talking about LSs, and you don't understand because, like... Oh, like, the people, like, if you want to... Is somebody jamming right now? Yeah, they're jamming. Stunt wall. Stunt oh, wall. St- yeah. What if it's the guy with the... Oh, the, the Tacoma yeah. one? Yeah. Oh. Could be. But like, <clears throat> we'll never know. Never know. People that put, like, oh, I'm going to put, like, a stockish 1J or 2J. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. But I just don't understand the, like, the super strung out like Jay Z's or even Max I Effort love stuff. SRs. Mm. But like if you're gonna put an SR in your car that's like super laggy and you're like Yeah Yeah dude I gotta Well one of my favorite things I hear in drifting and it's usually when you start getting to higher levels of competition. Okay. Yeah dude drives like a V eight. Nope. Because they got nitrous, mm. this crazy turbo. Still doesn't drive like a V eight. Right, but like it makes more torque than a V eight. And like are you really doing it? And this is again, people, you don't get it, bro. I don't, and that's fine. I think you're a dork for telling me I don't get it, because that's fine. You're a dork. <laughs> yeah. Like, this bozo what you, over what here. What are you doing, bro? Yeah. It's just silly goose time, dude. I ain't yep. got time for that. Silly goose I, that's, time. So that's my thing, right? My thing is like, okay, there's different engines for different power levels that are good for what they are. Yeah. Right? And like, I have a different viewpoint on that. Because I feel like the whole LS thing, right? If you're going to do an LS and it's going to have 800 plus horsepower, right? It's never happening NA. It's going to have nitrous or something. I feel like the best option with the like all the development of all the blowers and stuff is just a roots blower mm-hmm. yeah. <clears throat> on a good stout bottom end yeah. that can take the abuse. That and the power band, whipple? yeah, the power band's going to be sick. I think also the other option is like, for weight management and some other things, nitrous could fit better for some cars. If you do a 600 horsepower LS that's built for nitrous and you spray it to 850, you know, I think once you get to this thousand, 1100, 1200 mark, it gets difficult to do that without some sort of big disruptive power adder, no matter what you do. Yeah. Like, so it doesn't matter whether you're doing a 2J at 1,000 horsepower yep, at that and you have point, a turbo yeah, yeah, to yeah. spray yep. a little bit down low or you have a 1,000 horsepower roots blown LS that you're now trying to manage heat and weight and some other things with. Yep. Or you have, like us, where you build a 800 horsepower NA motor that costs 60 grand yeah. and then you spray it with 400 horsepower worth of nitrous. Yeah. Like... That's not feasible for most, not even us. I just lost even, last round because of nitrous yeah. problems, right? I was say, even like <clears throat> if you're talking that six to eight hundred horsepower window with nitrous, like, yeah, you're spending money on filling bottles, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, yo, I 
smoke. You're gonna spend money on any power adder. I smoke a 15 pound bottle yeah. in two laps. There's yeah. like three pounds left, yeah. four pounds left. But the other thing is too is like we've talked about it a million times, but there hasn't been a developing program for it. Is doing big block or something? Because mm-hmm. then you get 590 cubes, 600 cubes, NA pump wow. gas, Just and like you know, big boy, big power band. Yeah. Lots of power for low cost, yep. but and then you have this huge, massive motor that you got to fit two or two and a quarter inch primaries mm-hmm. on. So then you're like, well, every car is out. Yep. Yeah. You could maybe do it with a car like, no, you can't. I was going to say, like, you could do a car with wide frame rails, like a Subaru or like a FRS or one of those, but then the height. So valve covers would be out of the Subaru, yeah. this guy. No, those cars trash anyway, but like, oh, I'm going to get heat for that. It's not, uh, my, it's, I, not my, it's not my favorite car. There's many reasons I don't need to go. I into talked details. enough shit about two J's. You're good. You're in the yeah, clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're chilling. So I'm just saying, and like, like weight so then, too. If you're going LS with a with a roots blower, that's heavier. Those than roots than blowers a, are heavy. Yeah, an aluminum and big then, block. That's right. But you just can't fit it in anything. Yeah. Yep. There's literally like I I always am like look yeah right. So what do you do? Okay, well we're just gonna build really light, low horsepower cars and go have fun with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Right. That sounds like a good plan. It's like I feel like I'm on repeat old man at the skate park vibes. You know, yeah. you're just like, guys, you don't have to go that big. You can just enjoy it and love it for what it is. Yeah. You know? Uh, uh, that's the yeah. way she goes. I know. But it's always gonna be that. And I love that about drifting that it's like group B rally. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Except double the horsepower and yeah. you Do know what you want. Yeah, like as much as I'm like a Jay Z hater. Like, it is cool yeah. that, like, there's so many different. Mm-hmm. And, like, Turk's in a four-cylinder thing. Yeah. And, like, there's been a this... couple Volvo-powered rigs. Like, the inline five. That's weird. It yeah. is weird, but Sound they sound cool. Yeah. I don't vibe with that. I don't know. No, but it, it's it's just That cool is cool is that, like. No, that is drifting. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, is there any competitive drifting series that has engine restrictions? No, not that I know of. I don't think so. It's kind of just too hard to restrict that, and I think that's what the best part of drifting is, is that it's just, like, unlimited with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, you want to show up with a Sonny Bryant 632-cubic-inch yeah. motor with a blower? Yeah. Like, 2,000-plus horsepower? With those straps on it for yeah. the blower? Yeah, yeah just, Ooh. like, you want to do that? Mm. You can do that. Yeah. Good luck getting two laps, and good luck having any rear weight bias, but, like, you can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? The you're, restriction, you're allowed to do it. The power and all that stuff has really been harnessed and managed strictly by the fact that you have to get two laps out of a pair of tires. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? And it's been pretty good for a long time. You know, last few years, people have been fighting it and having problems with it because we're hooking the car up so much, we're planting the tires so hard, and we're getting the wheel speed. I think the speed of the cars hasn't gotten that much faster, but they're achieving that with more angle. Right, so oh, every five, six, seven degrees of angle you add, yeah, you need another hundred horsepower to maintain the same arc. It's almost like the yeah. aero battle, right? Of like going really fast and aerodynamics cost right. X amount of horsepower. It's a similar thing with the angle costs X amount of power to maintain. Yeah. Right, and but FD and a lot of these people like they don't even really judge off of that anyway. You have enough angle, you get the points, you know. So it's like really like a balance of that. And then being able to have the angle there to save you and do some things, but drive like, you know, at the 40 to 50 degree angle all the time thing mm. in competition use, you know? So I don't know. I'm always just like, there's so much thought process that goes into making a lot of horsepower. And I feel like so many people just like drive a thousand horsepower car on some sim game and be like, it's easier with a thousand horsepower. So I got to have a thousand horsepower. Yeah. I feel like that is 75% of drifting. I drove a car on Forza with a thousand horsepower, and it was way easier to drift than a car with four hundred. So I just need a thousand horsepower. You can't tell me anything different. Yeah. I don't know. It's <clears throat> I've struggled with telling people before, like, hey, like, one, you don't need X amount of power, and like, also, you don't want to drive these super gripped up cars. Like, it's wild. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> if you get the opportunity, you like, should. Somebody that has one goes, hey, man, take it. Take it mm-hmm. for a lap. Yeah. You should do it because it's nuts. Yeah. It's the craziest feeling. It's the most visceral thing like ever. <clears throat> yeah. But they're like, yeah, I want to, I want to build that. And I go, no, no. because yeah. you're going to, it's, you're making your only car not fun to drive. 15 
hundred dollars a lap. That's what I was gonna yeah. say. It comes back fifteen hundred dollars a lap to that money factor of like this costs so much. I need to enjoy this, and it just it forces you to yes. like have this different perspective instead of just enjoying it for the fun. Yeah, and it's just hard to go back from that too. Once you drive like super gripped up, yeah, and you're like, damn, this is wild. And then you go back to like loosey goosey. You're like, nah, yeah. that's not that's not as much fun, unless you have a bunch of bros and you're doing that together, right? right? Where you like cumulative have that fun factor back. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's hard. I, like I said, I think everybody. The problem is, and it's not really a problem, but everybody has to enjoy that mm. and experience that to be able to ring it back and understand yeah. it. But like I've always said, you know, it ain't tricking if you got it. So if you're a millionaire and you got all this money and you want to just drive a car like that all the mm-hmm. time, yeah. then you Let can do that. Yeah, like, yeah. why? Mm-hmm. If if it is the coolest feeling to drive this most insane car, yeah. and, like, you don't care about driving with other people weekly, monthly, whatever, mm-hmm. and your only goal is to have this insane car and you got the money to do it and two mechanics full time, like, pff, do it. Why not? Yeah. But to me, it's not worth that much time, money, and effort. No. We're out. Yeah. 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 Was that a good ending or no? Yeah. Sure. I like the abrupt ending.